Hello guys and welcome back to Car Obsession. Yes, it is back, get your car featured. You thought this series was dead? Well, you were wrong. And I'm back with the bang because I have this rather interesting Skoda Fabia, or Fabia, depending on your pronunciation, VRS. And yes, it's quite a bold car and it belongs to this guy here, Dexter. Talk me through what you've done. Um, so to start with, I've done a um, hybrid turbo. It's an 1856, um, it's a JW unit from Jake Ware. Nice. Um, it's got a polished head. Um, it's got 100% F-Rad injectors. Uh, it's got the standard uh, head bolts that everyone really uses, um, which are PD-150 head bolts. They've kind of got like a stronger, um, like they clamp down a little bit better. And yeah. They don't really stretch as much. Um, it's got a big front mount intercooler and hard pipes and a four bar map sensor and that's it really it's kind of like a very basic you say of. that's it that's, that's, a, <laughs> that's a fairly extensive list now one thing that a lot of uh, my viewers will be drawn toward is of course the windscreen talk me through that that's quite um, bold interesting yeah yeah it's a very um like a head turner um i got that done somewhere in sussex uh chameleon tint um, that's, that's legal yeah on the no very way. limit it's crazy on the very limit um can't really see in the car but outside you can see perfectly fine yeah but yeah it, it looks it looks almost opaque doesn't it you can <laughs> just about see the top of the dash through it if you look carefully but yeah it's just crazy now what made you want to go for that because it's such a kind of in your face look especially yeah. with the black paintwork it's it's a big contrast yeah massively yeah i mean as i do as much as i can to make my car a little bit different from the rest um things from like the ugly grill cover and then the odd wing mirrors that you've got on the car and yeah. do as much as I can to stay different from the rest. And then the alloys, they're not standard, are they? No, they're from a TT competition, Audi TT. Um, been refurbed, but all curved up now. <laughs> look good though. It matches the kind of uh, chunky look of the car. Yeah. I think they suit the car really well because they're kind of big and chunky and um, yeah, it just, it just suits the car. And you've got the different Front grille as well, haven't you? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's a, a grille cover from, it's a Team Heco one, the same guys that do all of the wind deflectors. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's, I think that's from the Czech Republic. I think they're pretty hard to get now with Brexit and stuff like that. And COVID and yeah, HGV drivers, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, guys, if you want to give him a follow on Instagram, there we go, at Dexter Allen, give him a follow. Uh, you've got the um, stripe going down the rear, I like that, that adds uh, five horsepower right there. <laughs> Uh, speaking of horsepower, actually, let's uh, lift up the, the bonnet, have a look at the old engine. Uh, if you don't know, guys, this car, even though it is a hot hatchback, is in fact a diesel. Under here, we have a 1.9 litre turbocharged unit, which I believe was, uh, was pinched from an Octavia. From standard, it would have pushed out 100 and, uh, 130 horsepower, along with 310 newton metres of torque. And the performance on paper, at least, wasn't particularly spicy because it would take 9.5 seconds to hit 62 miles per hour, which is boring. Not particularly hot hatchy, but it is reported that um, in the real world they were a bit quicker. And your car is quicker because it's been tuned. So, what kind of power is this car pushing out, roughly speaking? Yeah, it's kind of in the air. It's waiting to go on a dyno still. Um, the guys who've mapped it, um, it's Pegasus Performance. Uh, Jack and Connor, so Jack said it's roughly about 280, 290. Not bad, is it? Um, there's probably a little bit more to push out of it. There's people running the same sort of setup and turbo, um, pushing about 300. There's a guy in a little white beef got 310 out of him. Really? So yeah, there's probably a little bit more to go. But and what, what kind of torque do you think you're pushing out? Um, I wouldn't even know where to start. It's probably <laughs> about five, 580 maybe, I don't know. What, meters? Meter meters? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> She's pretty talky. So yeah, how many tyres do you get through? That's, that's my next question. Um, so it's a, <laughs> it's a fresh set this year. I've got hand cooks on the front. Won't last um, long. No, yeah, last year I went through four. Yep. Uh, done a set of NS2Rs, the semi-slicks. Yeah. Um, done a set of them Nankangs. And um, after that, I just brought budgets just to get me through. Fair enough. Towards the end of the year, through winter and stuff. But yeah, they don't last too long at all in this. No, I can imagine. Just to go to the rear, um, you've done a few bits here as well, haven't you? So you've got the, 
uh, Maxton design kind of extended uh, lip spoiler. Yeah. You can't really see it too well from here. There we go, that's a much better angle. There we go. Um, what else have we done? Um, I've, rear. I've got smooth boot. There's normally a couple of holes in the middle there, straight for the badge. Yeah. And you've normally got the VRS badge on the side, so the top half's been smoothed. Um, it's got all red rear lights, normally white in the middle. Um, and it's got a six by four tip for the exhaust. Um, well, nice and chunky. Yeah, kind of fills the gap a little bit. And on the interior, because of course that can't be forgotten about. So you've got a steering wheel that looks like it's been nicked from a Caterham, because it's tiny. <laughs> Yeah, she's a little Momo 280. Um, I've got a couple of gauges. I've got my boost and the exhaust temps in the middle vent. Yeah, just there. And then we've got these very racy sports seats. Well, they're bucket seats really, aren't they? Yeah. So look at those. Nice and snug. Perfect for a little B-road hoon. Comfy for a daily. <laughs> <laughs> daily? You what? Um, <laughs> So speaking of B-Road Hoons, I think it's about time we go out for a drive. So my first question to you is why a diesel hot hatchback? What made you want to, want to go for this and not, let's say, an equivalent Polo GTI or or Leon, uh, not, not Leon, so Ibiza Cupra. Yeah. Um, Why this car? I saw a couple on, on Facebook, they were, they were relatively cheap at the time. They yeah. were ranging from 800 pounds to about 1500 pounds. Really? Yeah, they're not horrendously expensive, um, luckily. Yeah. Uh, they've kind of shot up in price now, they're looking two and a half, three grand. Even that's um, not that bad though, is it? No, yeah. Um, and, well, it was diesel at the time, and diesel was cheapish. Um, Not anymore. Yeah, the fuel, um, like the MPGs. Um, I had a kid at the time, so I thought a four-door would be perfect. Yeah. Um, and it was just a, like a good daily at the time, really. I thought it would be perfect. Um, kind of taking the diesel out of diesel, <laughs> the, the MPGs out of it now. Yeah. Um, but still got the full seats. I still have my daughter in the back most of the time. Yeah. Um, not really planning on getting rid of it yet. It's kind of run it to the ground, I think. So what kind of MPG, MPG do you get out of this? Well, <laughs> on the clocks it's saying 59. <laughs> but, but, but you're not convinced? I'm not convinced, no. It, I put 35 pounds worth of fuel in the other day and it did about 200 miles on it. <laughs> So that's kind of in the um, in the question zone where it is. So you know a fair bit to this. Have you got any future plans? Um, I think a turbo would be amazing. Yeah. But when you start going bigger, they start getting more, more expensive, obviously. And you probably get more lag as well. More lag, yeah. It's not particularly laggy at the moment, which is perfect. This guy's in the middle of the road. Yeah, it's just he's walk against traffic, not with it. <laughs> Silly man. Um, and yeah, bigger turbo would be the idea, maybe one day. Yeah. We're looking into the 1000s though, especially with the guy that I want to go with. It's yeah. That J, JW still. Yeah. He's got this one. Like, pretty up there in the um, in the scene at the moment with turbos. Yeah. Probably one of the better people. Um, everyone always argues over tuners and turbos yeah. with all the PD stuff. No one can really win. No, the thing is, at the end of the day, it's all about personal preference. It's, it would be like saying which tyre is better out of a good deal or a Michelin. It's a case of they're all going to have their pros and cons. Exactly, it's just, yeah. it's all about personal taste and personal preference. The exhaust, was it custom made or was it kind of an off the shelf one? Um, I kind of brought it second hand actually. Oh, okay. Um, I brought it on the page, it's got a 275 downpipe um, with a two and a half all the way back. Yeah. It's That's kind of what not people normally go for. Um, with the different turbos, people normally go for like a three inch, they start getting a bit bigger. Yeah. Um, 
I think it'd be a bit overkill on my turbo. It's not particularly big, but yeah. And how long have you had this? This will be the third year. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gone through two turbos. Two? Two turbos, yeah. Uh, two gearboxes. <laughs> um, a little bit like chocolate. You get a good batch sometimes. <laughs> yeah. One lasts longer than the other. Um, obviously many tyres. Yeah. And done two drive shafts. Yeah. So this car is, is essentially Trigger's broom. Yeah. This old broom has had 17 new heads and 14 new handles in its time. <laughs> It finds its weakest point. <laughs> the ride's not too bad either, actually. So is this on any kind of coilovers or lowering springs? Yeah, it's on, it's on Pro Sport coilovers. Um, it's got polybushed everything. Yeah, yeah, um, you, you can definitely feel everything feels really firm. Not uncomfortable, just everything just feels really taut. Yeah, um, it's, quite, it's very responsive. Yeah. Um, it's got poly percentage mounts, which... Oh, that, that was a bit firm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's got poly percentage mounts, which I don't know, if, I'm not a fan of, to be honest. Like, when you're sitting in traffic, everything kind of rattles around. Yeah. Um, but it stops, I don't know if you have it in your car, the, the wheel hop, the front wheel drive wheel hop. Yeah, so I've got, I've got a Revo dog bone mount yeah. in my car. Um, so yeah, it kind of stops that a little bit more. Yeah, it, feels, it feels like a really solid, rigid car, but, yeah. not, to, but not to the point where it's bone shaking. It's it's firm. Don't get me wrong, um, but yeah, it just feels it feels solid. I think that's the the best word I can use for this car. Yeah, I kind of got to a point where I didn't really know where I wanted to go with it. If I wanted to have it like a show car, or if I kind of wanted to make it into a track car. Yeah, it's kind of been semi in the middle. It looks yeah. nice ish. Um, I've got the standard wheels which have semi slicks on it for summer. Yeah. Um, no point putting them on in the winter, it's it just spin up for days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially with the amount of torque you're, you're yeah, potentially pushing out. Yeah. So I've got a different clutch in it as well. It's a little bit brutal. So oh yeah, it's got stage one. Yeah, it's got. It's a, well, I'm not really too sure if it goes in stages. It's um, it's a five puck, but it's still on a dual mass, so it kind of um, softens it up a little so bit. Did you say? Did you say it's paddle clutch or is it organic? Yeah, paddle. paddle yeah, yeah. Um, it's not particularly heavy though, which is kind of nice. Um, they do, they do four pucks and stuff like that as well. Yeah. Um, but. I'm not really too sure what brake it's how like meant to be go up to. Yeah, I think it's about 450 they hold 450 brake. That is. Yeah. What do you think you'd have after you own this? What would be your next move, or what would be your your dream car or your dream project, perhaps? I feel like my next car. I'm, I kind of want to stay with a diesel. I think. Okay. I, after owning a fast diesel, fast yeah. diesel. I see other ones like a 335D, E92. What, what you really want is a high mileage A6 <laughs> Avant. That's, what, that's, that's where you want to put your money. Yeah, might have to be. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I quite like a 335D. Yeah. Um, I think they're massively tunable as well. You can get like a thousand newton meters of torque out of them. Really? That clutch feels okay to be fair actually. It does feel weird driving with such a small steering wheel though. Yeah. It feels like driving the, the newer Peugeots. It looks a lot smaller in the passenger seat. It feels tiny in my hands. <laughs> I feel like a giant. I feel like Peter, Peter Crouch or something. <laughs> you do tower over me. <laughs> oh. I feel a bit of torque steer. <laughs> it torque steers. It's crazy in almost every gear. <laughs> I just bad just 
driving with such a small steering wheel. <laughs> yeah. Steering wheel's out of my Mark II Polo. So it kind of fits the Polo. Yeah. Kind of a little bit out of place in this sort of car. <laughs> In the driver's seat, the ride actually feels a bit more, a bit more comfortable. I don't know if it's because I'm more focused on the driving. Yeah. But yeah, it actually feels fairly, fairly compliant. Yeah. You're gonna expect what you're about to hit almost, aren't you? Yeah. But you, you, you are right. What you said off camera about the seat. Um, yeah. It, <laughs> that was just like the seat's a bit offset, isn't it? It gives quite a quirky driving experience. <laughs> It feels like I'm driving an old Italian car. Yeah. I'm kind of, my arms are kind of going like that towards the steering wheel. Yeah. I've kind of, instead of looking straight ahead, I'm kind of just looking to the uh, <laughs> left a bit. Yes, yeah, certainly a, a unique driving experience. Yeah. I didn't even notice it till someone else sat in the seat and he was like, hmm, yeah, you're not really in the middle, are you? I was like, ah, I'm not. <laughs> and that kind of points out every time. Have you got a? Um, you, should get, you, should, you should get a short shifter fitted. Yeah, that is a plan. They do do a little a four take one. Um, I really want the short shifter and an anti roll bar, a rear anti roll bar. Ford Ford Motorsport might do a um, uh, short shifter. Oh, they might. Oh, Hashtag no ad. <laughs> Because it sounds so good, I don't know if I'm being silly here, but it doesn't really feel like I'm driving a diesel. No, yeah. yeah. It's a very weird noise to expect from a diesel. Yeah. Like, you get a mix of turbo and exhaust. I love the fact that you sat nice and low. It feels really sporty. I wonder like, why. <laughs> like these sort of cars. Hmm, could it be the noise? <laughs> the black spoke. <laughs> the uh, chameleon tint. So many different options yeah. <laughs> of, of which to offend uh, an OAP. Nice car to rev match as well. Yeah. I've, I've driven a few diesels and I've never known a, a diesel to be that particularly rewarding to rev match, but this is. Yeah, it's quite it's quite a revy diesel. Yeah. Like they rev up quite quickly. Yeah. I think I think that's another other reason why it feels a bit more petrol-y, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, so I find sometimes when I've tried to rev match in a diesel, it nothing really happens. It's it's just a bit lethargic. But this is quite it's quite peppy, quite spiky. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's got a lot of response to it. Yeah, throttle response is lovely. Just a shame we're stuck behind a Rav 4. Yeah, well, we'll get past that in a minute. <laughs> a few minutes later. Yeah, it does, it rev, does rev up really nicely. Yeah. Oh yes, rally car spec. And you find with some diesels, because a lot of the power and torques in the mid range, when you get towards the red line, it just dies. Yeah. But in this, it actually kind of keeps going, doesn't it? Yeah. It's really, it's quite bizarre. It doesn't what you would expect from a diesel. This doesn't really give you that. But it, but that's not a bad thing. It definitely doesn't feel 
right to rev a diesel that far though, does no, it? No, it doesn't, because normally in diesel you get to a point where it's like, oh, I may as well change up now, there's no point in going all the way, but in this, the power does die off a little bit, but you, you can still tell it's, it's wanting to pull. Yeah. Yeah, for a diesel car, it doesn't feel diesel-y. Oh, there we are. Dexter's Skoda Fabia Fabia VRS. A bit of an anomaly, because of course it is a diesel hot hatch. Right, just make sure it's going to be okay, because the entry of this car park isn't particularly uh, forthcoming for lowered cars. And let's bang, bang it next to Leo, my Cupra. Um, yeah, a massive thank you for Dexter for coming onto the channel, letting me have a go in these uh, VRS because uh, to begin with there were some problems with the insurance, um, not problems but just, yeah, that's just boring admin stuff <laughs> I, I won't bore you with. Uh, yeah, as I said earlier, if you want to check Dexter out on Instagram, then I will pop his details uh, on the screen right now and also in the video description. Uh, if you've got a car that you'd like to have featured on my channel, then please do get in touch. You can hit me up on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook, or on YouTube, of course. Uh, I do hope you have enjoyed this video. If so, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you are subscribed, don't forget to click the bell icon so you get notified every time I make a video. But until the next time, guys, be sure to keep up the car obsession.